Osteoporosis is something we hear about very commonly because it's a very rampant disease. It affects approximately 54 million Americans. Bone, as you may know, is a living part of our bodies. It does grow and change over time. What happens in osteoporosis is you either lose bone, make too little new bone, or have both problems at the same time, where you're losing too much bone while also making too little new bone. In osteoporosis, the bone actually becomes less dense and more porous, and it loses its normal honeycomb appearance. So what you can see here on these diagrams is that this is normal bone, looks very nice, robust, honeycomb shape. And here on the right, you see osteoporotic bone, where it's lost its normal structure. And you can imagine when it loses its normal structure, if a person falls, their bone is more likely to break. In fact, osteoporotic bone can even break without a fall. Osteoporosis, unfortunately, is often a silent disease. It's not something that people can feel. They don't often experience a feeling of weak bones. People don't necessarily have bone pain from osteoporosis. But unfortunately, having these weak bones means that they can break more easily. And because there aren't a lot of early warning signs, often a fracture or a broken bone is actually the first sign that the bone density and the bone quality might be compromised or impaired in some way. So how do we diagnose osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is diagnosed with a test known as bone density test. It's also known as DEXA, which stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. And what this test measures is it measures the density of the bone at the spine, at the hip, and depending on where you do the test, sometimes the wrist bones as well. In postmenopausal women, so women who no longer get their period, usually women over the age of 50, we define these results as either normal bone density, decreased bone density, which is also known as osteopenia, or osteoporosis. In premenopausal women, which um, a lot of you are here in this talk since it's geared to women in their 20s and 30s, we define the results in two ways. You either have bone density that is expected for age or bone density that is below expected for age. We actually do not use the term osteoporosis to define weak bones in women who are premenopausal or women who are still getting their menstrual period. Osteoporosis outside of bone density can also be diagnosed if a person sustains a low trauma fracture. So irrespective of what a bone density test shows, if a person breaks a bone from an injury that would be insufficient to break a normal bone, this kind of fracture is known as a fragility fracture, and this is a hallmark fracture of osteoporosis. So a very classic example of this that I see a lot in my practice is a woman who's walking on the street and the pavement is wet from rain, and she slips and falls and breaks a hip. So some people might think, well, of course she broke her hip, she fell, but actually the hip should be a very strong, tough bone, and it should not be a bone that fractures from fall. One in two women and one in four men over the age of 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis. So this is a very common problem in our population. So who are these people? Who are these one in two women and one in four men who are falling and breaking their bone from osteoporosis? Well, we know that 9 million Americans currently have osteoporosis. It tends to be more disease of women than men, and these 9 million Americans are broken down roughly to 7.5 million women and 1.5 million men. We know that bone loss actually speeds up around midlife, both for men and women. So building bones early in your teens, 20s, and 30s is really key. There are certain genetic factors and medical conditions that increase risk for osteoporosis that I will be reviewing today. And we know that you can optimize your chances to maintain healthy and strong bones throughout your life as a young adult. This is a brief overview of osteoporosis risk factors that I will go through. So some of this is genetic, meaning it's predetermined and not something that people can change, such as a family history of osteoporosis, family history of other diseases that increase risk for bone loss, which we will go over, and also failure to achieve peak bone mass, which we will talk a lot more about in detail later. There are environmental factors that increase risk for osteoporosis, including excess consumption of alcohol, any amount of exposure to cigarette smoke, prolonged bed rest or immobility, because we know gravity is very important for improving the skeleton. We know that when people go into outer space and they lose the effects of gravity, they actually lose bone. Also, various nutritional deficiencies can increase risk for osteoporosis. So some diseases that increase risk for osteoporosis, and some of which can be genetic, are rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease and inflammatory colitis, as well as celiac disease. These diseases, due to increased inflammation, due to issues with calcium and vitamin D absorption, can lead 
people to have higher risk for osteoporosis. Also, there are various medications that have bone weakening as a side effect. The most common of these medications are steroids. Steroids can come in many different forms. Some common steroids are prednisone, dexamethasone, and hydrocortisone, but there are a lot of other kinds. Steroids are often used to treat inflammation. We can give them as pills, we can give them as creams, inhalers, injections, and we know that all forms of steroids, especially when used for prolonged periods of time, can increase risk for bone loss and osteoporosis. Various seizure medications, specifically older medications like phenytoin and phenobarbital, can increase risk for bone loss. Taking high doses of vitamin A can increase risk for bone loss. Medications such as proton pump inhibitors, this is some newer data, but there are some results from some studies that suggest that people who take proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, nexium, or pantoprazole protonics have a higher rate of osteoporosis than people not on these medications. Also, there are certain hormonal agents that increase risk for osteoporosis and bone loss. Two of them I'll mention are commonly used in women, Lupron and Depo-Provera. Lupron is a medicine that some young women undergoing infertility treatments use, and Depo-Provera is a form of injectable birth control. We know that these two medications end up suppressing estrogen and progesterone levels, and over time, this can have negative effects on bone. Additionally, hormonal imbalances can increase risk for osteoporosis. Missing menstrual periods can increase risk for osteoporosis. Any hormonal imbalance that leads to low estrogen levels in women, any hormonal imbalance that leads to low levels of testosterone in men. We also know that thyroid hormone, especially hyperthyroidism, too much thyroid hormone, can increase risk for bone loss and osteoporosis. Peak bone mass, I mentioned this on the last slide, is potentially something that's genetic. So peak bone mass is the greatest amount of bone a person can attain. Peak bone mass tends to be achieved in their early 20s in men, and peak bone mass is achieved up to the age of 30 in women. This is a very important concept because we know that young adults with high peak bone mass actually have a lower risk of osteoporosis when they get older. There are a lot of key features for how to achieve peak bone mass, but I would say the two top two important aspects are to get enough calcium and vitamin D in your diet, because that is key for retaining peak bone mass. You know, calcium and vitamin D are the building blocks of bone. We also know that exercise is very important to build strong bones, especially weight-bearing exercise. Having regular monthly menstrual cycles for women as well is vital for retaining peak bone mass because having regular monthly menstrual cycles tells, that, tells women that they have enough estrogen in their system. And as we'll talk later, estrogen is very important for building bone. 